transformations, example one, a negative enlargement. Enlarge shape A by a scale factor of minus two, using zero, zero as the center of enlargement. So first break this down. Scale factor of minus two. So we know that the shape is gonna double in size because of the two, but we also know it's gonna be on the opposite side of the center of enlargement because it's negative. What I mean by that is say, for example, our center of enlargement was there. Well, the original is on this side, so the resultant is gonna be on this side. Using zero, zero as a center of enlargement, so let's identify zero, zero. Well, that's just the origin. So then we need to draw some lines to help us with the enlargement. So pick a point on the shape. So I'm gonna pick this point to start with and connect that to our center of enlargement, but then extrapolate the line through. So just carry on the line through to fill the rest of the graph as such. So you can see here, the point on the shape has been connected to the center of enlargement and then just carried on through so that we can use it in the lower quadrant of the graph. I can repeat this process for the other two points on the shape. Then we need to look at the distances of the points from the center of enlargement. So you can see, for example, this point, you go across two and up one. Our scale factor is minus two, so that that distance is gonna double. So in this case, carrying on along the same lines, we'll go across four, because previously we went across two. So one, two, three, four, and then we went up one, so we're going to go vertically to this time. And you can see that meets the line that we drew in from that point. So that's always a good sign. We can repeat this process for a few more of the points. So let's pick this point now. You can see we go up to across one. So now we're going to go vertically four because previously we went vertically two. Um, so one, two, three, four. And then across two because previously we went across one and we can see we meet the lines again there from there you've got two points so that should be enough to to draw in the shape however if you want to keep repeating that process that's absolutely fine i would start by connecting these two points because we know they're definitely going to be connected then we know that this side is completely straight and will be on one of the lines as in one of these um grid lines so we can draw in the final shape, which results in this. You can see it resembles the original shape. It's the same sort of style, but it's twice the size. An easy way to tell that is because this is now two squares tall. This was only one square tall and so on. So that's the resultant shape there. It still looks the same, pretty similar, but it's doubled in size and it's on the other side of the center of enlargement. Example two, a combination of transformations. The shape A on the grid is translated by the vector minus six one, then rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, draw the resultant shape. So I would literally just split this into two parts, do the first transformation and then do the second one. So focusing on the translation first, so that just means we're gonna slide the shape, it's not gonna get bigger, it's not gonna rotate, anything like that, it's just gonna slide. It's by the vector minus six one. What that means is we're gonna move six units in the negative X direction, negative as in to the left, and then one in the positive vertical direction, so one up. So doing that, I would just pick a point. So for example, pick this point on the shape, go six to the left, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we know that that's gonna go one up as well. So that point will end up there. Once you've got one point, that should be enough because you know the shape is not gonna get bigger or rotate or anything like that. So you can just copy the shape in and that results in this. From there, we need to rotate the shape. So it's rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So identify where the origin is. That's our center of rotation. That's the point there. Clockwise means we're gonna go around this way, the same way that a clock turns. And then 90 degrees, well, you can think of a right angle. If a line is vertical, it would then end up over here where that's a right angle. So the best way of doing this is to place a bit of tracing paper on top, trace round your shape. So literally just draw round the shape, draw your center of enlargement on to the tracing paper, and then either hold your finger or a pen on the center of enlargement 
and then just slide the tracing paper around. And that results in that transformation there. So this is the combination of transformations. And just visually, you can see that it's been rotated 90 degrees because, for example, this side here, so this vertical side here, corresponds to this bit. So what was now vertical is now horizontal. So you can do a quick little check and just make sure it makes sense on our learning platform. Here you can answer a series of questions on this topic and get instant feedback on how you've done. So you can see here, these ones are multiple choice and then there'll be certain ones where you have to solve the transformation yourself. And then you'll get instant feedback on how you've done both in a written solution format, explaining exactly how you should do it. And then if you're still unsure, there's a video where an expert will talk you through exactly how to solve the problem.